What is up YouTube and welcome to this Songbird Breakdown and Review and really, we really need to talk about this movie aka How to Break Lockdown and Get Away With It, the movie. Now, apocalyptic dramas are some of my favourite and it might be why I read all of Why the Last Man in a Weekend and the adored Love and Monsters, a movie which came out earlier this year. Now, the lore and settings of how a world survives after society collapses is something I'm fascinated with and sadly living with right now. But hey, it's just the flu, as people keep saying. And on the surface, it looks absolutely stunning. LA looks ravaged by time and alternative history or could be our future where COVID-19 has mutated into a virus that's airborne and kills people within 24 hours. Yes, it is a very interesting idea and is currently happening actually right now as the UK has a new strain of the virus. The shots of KJ Appa riding through this LA, now his playground is he is immune and, while well, a key worker, let's get clapping, are mesmerizing as we see the typical low angle signature bayisms at work, but the lens flare has been toned down and there isn't even a panning shot of people standing up and looking around a la bad boys. Maybe those people are still furloughed. Well, the way they use iPads as the doorbell system, so actors basically recorded their scenes, and we see that the counterpart is interacting with them is actually pretty clever. But the sheer technical marvel of the movie in a lockdown is where the great ends, and the movie itself was an ensemble story of awful, and I wished for a lack of taste so I could enjoy the movie for what it was. Now, admittedly, I did wonder what the movie would actually be about, but it's somehow premium rush mixed with the movie Closer. Yes, we have had so many great apocalyptic movies, and I felt like this might have been a Children of Man mixed with 28 Days Later, obviously, with no one around. But the year is 2024, and COVID-19 is now COVID-23, and citizens have daily virus checks via their phone, which I, I don't get how that works either. And you're sent to the quarantine zone, essentially a concentration camp, if you are actually positive with the virus. Now, we see Nico ride around the LA landscape, delivering parcels to people. And it will be funny, as I explain to my son when he's older and he watches this, well, hopefully he doesn't, that yes, we did all stay at home and order everything off Amazon. So I like this, and Nico works for Lester Getz, a bike messenger and delivery service run by Doug Judy. And yeah, he's just pretty bad at his job. Nico is in a relationship, or at least a virtual relationship, to Sarah Garcia, a young artist living with her grandmother, and Nico delivers a parcel to the second of our major characters, the Griffins, William and Piper, who have a daughter who is immunocompromised, meaning they must stay in their house and can't go out at all. Now, we start off with promise, but this is a weird storyline that gets even weirder, how William, Piper's husband, keeps going out to meet a singer who he's gaslighting and tricking into sleeping with while she streams online in between naughty sessions. Yes, Michael Bay went straight down this line of using women as just property and things like that and objects just like his Transformers franchise. What a lovely guy. Now, it seems that Piper and William actually have a side hustle of organising lockdown illegal parties, doing this by selling forged immunity bracelets, and that's where the movie's problems start. However, while over the course of the movie, William goes to visit May, our streamer, and she does a strip tease wearing PPE in one of the most bizarre scenes I think I've ever seen put on film. Now, this actress, everyone, all the horny boys seem to like, but the thing is, William is risking his daughter's life every single day by going out. And even when he says, get rid of the face mask, baby, you're just like, hold on a minute. Your daughter could literally die just so you could actually get a bust. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And the story could have actually gone somewhere, you know, kind of interesting with a sort of hierarchy of rich, poor, and actually go somewhere with the Emmett character who was a guy who just drove some garbage trucks and show how the lockdown has changed the whole hierarchy of society. But no, it turns out that the man who controls the bike messenger's drones is absolutely obsessed with May 
and that is William Sajic. And he tips her $100 after talking about being a war veteran, only for her to instantly fall in love with him. I wish I could say this is the creepiest and most ridiculous male fantasy in a Michael Bay movie, but there was a guy who had a laminated card with the Romeo and Juliet law printed on it. It's just absolutely baffling. But each woman in this is just a thing for a man to do something. Uh, yeah, I kind of worded that a bit wrong there, but it's very much a Bay movie as KJ's character Nico is essentially an incredibly attractive and charming sandwich wiki from Transformers, annoying his employer so he can get some virtual punani. However, the movie finally gets going when some actual plot happens and a movie about a pandemic claims its first victim 40 minutes in, which is Sarah's grandmother, and it turns out that she has symptoms, which is where we're introduced to one of the most ridiculous over-actors of all time, Emmett, who's played by Peter Stormare, the guy who is just the quintessential bad guy in everything. He is immune and works for the Department of Sanitation, and basically the people who run the garbage trucks now pick up bodies and enforce a lockdown. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, he threatens Sarah that he will be back at 9am because there's been reports that there are people in the house and the apartment that have the virus as their neighbour has symptoms and is taken away. He also killed a guy just before this who was out after curfew because I don't know why. It, yeah, anyway. Now, here is where the movie does actually start. So Nico learns of this and decides to spend the night outside the door of the apartment and the grandmother fails the test via her phone. Again, how that works... Just you tell me. And Nico promises to stop them from being taken, which I take umbrage with as this glorifies the idea of flouting lockdown rules, which has caused this whole damn mess in the first place. It turns out that he has a hookup for immunity bracelets as Lester is transporting them via his messenger of service and the Griffins are the ones distributing them. Desperado Nick heads there to buy one, but it turns out that their hookup is Emmett, but... This is absolutely a trap. So Nico heads to a dirty warehouse where they meet, and I find it genuinely bizarre that the, the head of Los Angeles sanitation is on a wanky little place where hobos would probably go to do it. But Stabby McGee gets stabby again and pulls out his knife, only for Nico to escape and finds a man who is a cross between the Punisher and an anti-lockdown protester who saves him from the soldiers, but then goes back in after saving him. He serves no point other than to save Nico. Now, I'm going to take the liberty of creating a backstory for him. Now, our anti-lockdown protester had a wife and kids, and he was desperate and bought an immunity bracelet, but he was shortchanged by Emmett, leading to his family, taken to the Q-Zone, and he's come for revenge, Frank Castle style. Nico escapes, but now the sanitation team have arrived to take Nico's girlfriend away. But, well, she is able to escape them and puts on a hazmat suit, and everyone's like, Oh, okay, this is all fine. Now, at the end, we find out that she's immune, but Nico has no idea that she is immune, meaning he was willing to put her in danger because he wants some of that. While the whole mess of getting the bracelets occurs, William is dumped by May, who has recorded all of their interactions, and for some reason, his only reaction is like, um, you're not dumping me, and acts completely toxic and just lights up her phone he's not even using airpods for this call his wife can hear the whole damn thing and she's at the door like some kind of redditor wife he leaves as may tells her now somehow online boyfriend because i guess that's how it works you donate and you get an e-girl luckily he has a drone with a gun that shoots him while he's going after her yes yeah he had a drone with a gun with an american flag on it just Michael Bay, come on. Nico is able to go and get the passes, which Piper gives to him, but wait, why didn't she just give them to him in the first place? It, it doesn't actually make any sense, and they do try to have some semblance of a motivation for Emmett as he goes back to the Nico's girlfriend's place, but for some reason, presumably to have a crescendo moment, they fight, and, and obviously Nico wins. And he finds her phone that has a photo that she took of the van that's come to take her. Yeah. Conveniency aside, Doug, Judy, and Mr. Simp are able to find him and find the truck, and they rush to sneak the bracelet on his girlfriend, and I don't know why anyone was like, hold on a minute, 
you weren't actually wearing that bracelet before. Are you are you immune? And then they, they find out that she is immune and she was going to be taken anyway, but she survives. And, well, that aside, that is really that. Nico then gets to leave and gives his friends immunity bracelets when they aren't immune, leading them on a path to getting COVID-24. Now, yeah, this was atrocious. And of all the things they could have done, they decided to focus on a woman being gaslit by a man and... Well, she was saved by a drone gun and a guy helping all of his mates break a lockdown. Now, I have no issue with them making a movie during a pandemic. And it, it kind of makes sense they'll make a movie about a pandemic. But at least make a good one that, that has a story. And yeah, that's really it. it. It was just awful. But that's it for this video. I'll see you soon and goodbye.